Curtis Voth of the Tulsa Oilers grew up on a farm near Riverhurst, Saskatchewan. Curtis showed great promise as a playmaker in his early years. But in junior, he changed his role from goal scorer to tough guy. You don't fight in minor hockey really very much and, and stuff, so I was kind of a scorer. And uh, I guess as I, as I went up uh, in AAA midget, I fought a little bit. And then when I started going to junior camps, I fought a little bit because you, you know what the scouts like to see that. And I think I kind of got labeled because I was fairly good at it, I guess, and people knew that I didn't mind doing it. Four years ago, at the age of 21, Kevin and Curtis left Canada to take advantage of the opportunities these new leagues offered to tough guys. I just came down my first year after junior, and uh, I started out in the East Coast, and I got released, and I kind of bounced around, and I always wanted to play pro hockey, and I didn't really want to go to college. Well, that wasn't really my style. I wasn't going to be a college-type player, so nothing else I'd rather be doing. For the, I mean, there's no, n nothing else I could do to make the money I make. Curtis is beginning his third season with Tulsa. In each of his first two, he set league records for most penalty minutes in a season, making him by far the fan favorite. He's a bad boy. The bad boys are the funnest guys to watch. He plays full speed ahead all the time, and he doesn't take anything off of anybody. His vote of most popular player here last year. And I mean, the fight in three fights a game, and he's not afraid of nobody, and that's what we pay to come see. If we want to watch the Nets hockey, we'll stay at home and watch the NHL. I enjoy beating a guy up probably as much as scoring a goal if you really beat a guy up, like, especially if a guy wants to fight you and you give it, you really give it to him. That's probably one of the best feelings, I think, in hockey. I mean, some guys probably would differ on scoring goals or getting a hat trick or something, but uh, myself, I think that's, that's as big an enjoyment as anything. Oh, I love it. I love watching him fight. I don't know. I don't like seeing him get hit, but he usually doesn't get hit, so I've never, like, seen him get pounded or anything. Like, usually it's either pretty even or Curtis by far wins, so it's pretty good. It gets the crowd going, so it's nice. For Curtis and Brandy, life in Tulsa couldn't get much better. For Brandy, who grew up here and whose family remains in the area, there's no place she'd rather raise their children and have Curtis play hockey. You want to know our little story? <laughs> um, I was working at Hooters, and Curtis came in one night, and we kind of noticed each other, but I wasn't waiting on the guys. I was waiting on a different section, so we didn't really talk that much. A couple of days later, he came in and invited me to a couple of games, but for some reason, I didn't show up. <laughs> And then he came back and invited me into another one and so I showed up and then ever since then we've been together. Tough guys are known for having a short fuse, but as Curtis finds out, an uncontrolled temper can be a tough guy's worst enemy. During a pre-game practice in San Antonio, an argument with his coach turns into an on-ice altercation. He is immediately suspended from the team. He calls Brandy to break the news. Well, I got into a fight with the coach, but I mean it wasn't, it wasn't a fist fight, but it was an argument and it got, I mean we came together and there was no punches thrown or anything, but yeah, it's where uh, the short the short version of it. I corrected Curtis uh, on on a real simple instruction uh, during a basic drill. Uh, he took offense to that. Uh, a, a bit of a confrontation on the ice uh, started. I asked Curtis to leave the ice, uh, which he started to do, and he turned around, came back, and and the gloves were off. I might have to get a job or something. I don't know. It's been two weeks since Curtis was suspended for fighting with his coach. He's asked to be traded to a team close to Tulsa so that Brandy can remain near her family. But team ownership has no intention of trading Curtis to any of its closest rivals. With no resolution in sight, his career and his family are in limbo. God, I wish I was playing this game. Finally, three and a half weeks after being suspended, Curtis learns his fate. He's been traded to Huntsville, Alabama, a last place team with the league's lowest attendance. It's harder now that he's married with a young family. When I started playing pro hockey like five years ago, I really didn't have a, a really not a care in the world. I mean, other than that, go play hockey and if you got traded or released or whatever, it didn't matter, but it can't be always just about me now. It's gotta be like where it's best for my wife and for my kids. So he's either gonna be somewhere next year for good or we're done. 
playing hockey. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Well, and you're at home with two kids. That, you know, you just play hockey. That's all you do, Chris. You play hockey. That's all you do. Pop Ice family pressures are taking their toll on Curtis. He berates his players for their poor play. Nobody feels the heat more than Curtis. But Curtis doesn't get a chance to redeem himself. Coach Cox loses patience with his poor play and benches him for the entire third period. Late in the game, Holiday records his 38th major of the season, six short of the record. This is the fight that Curtis should have been in, and he knows it. Getting benched was the last straw. The next day, he walks into Coach Cox's office and asks to be traded. 